thousands of smoke and gas grenades, Molotov cocktails, and hundreds injured. In Western France's saint soline a demonstration against the construction of a large water reservoir turned into a violent clash between protesters and police. Serge Dutay Graziani, a 32-year-old activist, was seriously injured. As of April 7th, the day this video was published, he was still in life-threatening condition. Le Monde gathered dozens of hours of video footage captured that day, along with witness testimonies, to confirm Serge Dutay Graziani, who was on the front line of the clashes, was most likely hit by an illegal tear gas grenade. At the end of the morning on March 25th, thousands of demonstrators set off towards the saint Mega megabasin. The gathering was forbidden by the local authorities, and a significant number of gendarmes were deployed. Their objective was to prevent the protesters from entering the site. Just before 1pm, the first demonstrators arrived from the southeast corner of the reservoir. To keep them at bay, the gendarmes fired tear gas grenades. Demonstrators responded with fireworks. A front line was established around the reserve, passing from its eastern to its western flank between 1 and 2 p.m. Throughout this hour, the clashes became increasingly intense, and the weapons used caused more and more damage. Demonstrators threw stones and Molotov cocktails, while the police used stun grenades, sting ball grenades, and flashballs. Some of the footage shows illegal shooting using a flashball. And also with a Kuga grenade launcher. In this video, shot by brute journalist Camille Corsi, a protester is hit by an MP7 tear gas grenade. This small part indicates that it was fired with a launcher powerful enough to send it about 200 meters away when fired at a 45 degree angle. This angle of fire gives the grenade time to open in the air and disperse its pellets. Theoretically, it's not the grenade, which weighs 300 to 400 grams, that falls to the ground, but several smaller and lighter parts, which are less dangerous. But here, it appears to approach at a much lower angle. The potential range of fire indicates that the gendarmes are between 50 and 130 meters away. Which means the grenade did not have enough time to open before hitting the demonstrator. Despite our research, we were not able to identify this demonstrator or find out what resulted from the fired MP7. Did the same thing happen to Serge Dutay Graziani? Several images show him in close proximity to the clashes. He can be seen wearing white gloves, a white construction helmet, and a white gas mask. To understand how he was injured, we have to fast forward a few minutes. In these photos taken at 1.49 p.m., Serge appears wounded. He's a few meters behind the clashes. These drone images show the moment the photo was taken. A few seconds earlier, in the same area Serge had been, two white helmets emerged from the group. If we follow this one, we can see that he's still there one minute later, after Serge has left the group. At around 1.48 p.m., Serge is here, as French daily Liberation observed. Serge collapses within seconds. Could he have been hit by a projectile thrown by the demonstrators? 
We analyzed the few seconds that passed beforehand across the protest area and marked about 10 demonstrators throwing projectiles. But none of them were thrown in the direction of Serge. To understand what happened to him, we're going to review these few seconds. Before Serge collapses, a GM2L tear gas and stun grenade falls and explodes a few meters behind him. The demonstrator seems to turn his head toward the explosion. We can make out the left side of his white gas mask. Meanwhile, another projectile comes toward him. It hits the right side of his helmet, which flies off and ricochets to the right. A few seconds later, a cloud of tear gas escapes from the group, and a demonstrator throws back a tear gas canister toward the gendarmes. The projectile that hit Serge was most likely to be a tear gas grenade. But where did it come from? This is the trajectory of the GM2L grenade, just before it exploded. It came above this cloud of tear gas, meaning it was fired in a bell-shaped curve. But this does not seem to be the case for the grenade that hit Serge, which exited the bottom of the cloud at the level of this tree. Several gendarmes equipped with grenade launchers, as well as an armored vehicle also equipped with a grenade launcher, are behind these clouds of smoke. Other footage taken moments before show them firing grenades in the direction of Serge's group. Given the trajectory and the height of these shots, they do not seem to have been fired in a bell-shaped curve. Moments later, Serge was hit. It's extremely likely he was injured by a shot from one of these grenade launchers, fired at the incorrect angle, meaning the shooter did not follow regulation. Serge was quickly taken out of the group to be looked after by other demonstrators and volunteer medics. Despite almost immediate calls to France's emergency service number, paramedics took more than an hour to arrive, according to the local prefect. The public prosecutor, in charge of investigations into complaints of police violence following the protest, says Serge was hospitalized with a serious head injury and a spinal fracture. He remains in a coma almost two weeks after his injury.